with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And all the people that love God said, all right, not bad, but you got beat by the nine o'clock today. <laughs> well, there was a few more of them in here. And yeah, because I went long. I went a little long. It went long, so it always takes a little while for the 11.30 for to accumulate. This is the growing service anyway. It, it is. It's it grows a, from 11.30 to noon. Yeah. All right, so how many of you, you had an incredible Thanksgiving? Did you all have a good Thanksgiving? How many of you, you are still eating turkey and will continue to eat turkey and Thanksgiving fixings and leftovers, all right? How many of you, you are done? You are just like done. <laughs> How many were done right after Thanksgiving? You're like, you're, you're done? You're, so I think I like, I, I like the turkey sandwich after. That's Brenda really makes important. a mean turkey. You really make a mean turkey sandwich. My favorite. So. Well, we had a great Thanksgiving. You know, it was um, great. Jonathan, our son, came into town, and so we were able to spend some time with him and, and uh, have some turkey. But, you know, whenever Matt and John are around, there's not a whole lot left over, Brenda. You know what I'm <laughs> so, nope. But anyway, well, listen, you know, I, I was thinking about this with Thanksgiving. You know, uh, the day after is Black Friday. How many of you are Black Friday shoppers? I'm actually a Black Friday shopper. See, now, okay, Look watch this. this. Not as many... The no, 9 o'clock tons of hands totally. went up. That's why they come to the early service. That's what it is. So, wait, I got to see it again. So, how many Black Friday shoppers? Look at this. I am a Black Friday shopper, too. I know you're shocked. Are you shocked I'm a Black Friday shopper? Yep. Kenny, tell us. He shouted out. Online. I'm the online guy. And I'm going to tell you right now. I had my slippers on. Your plaid pajama Brenda, pants. you're not supposed to tell people that yeah, they I wear plaid because that's like your old plaid guy or something. pajamas. And my hair is not, you know, contacting and the three German shoppers. And I bought stuff online. How many of you, you do that? You are an online shopper. That's the best way to do it. Avoid the crowds, that's all of true. that. That's true. I don't mind. I liked it. It was good. All right. So what we, was your favorite part of Thanksgiving real quick? Well, having John home. Was yeah. Sean... You're moderating. I know you're He's hearing all right this. Now. He moderates uh, for our streaming yeah. during. So, John, we did have a few leftovers after you left, <laughs> but you'll be back at Christmas. We'll cook double. <laughs> okay. That's it. Well, John, not only do we want to greet you, we greet you, son, and we can't wait to see you again, and we love you very much. And uh, by the way, I did tell you to text me when you got back. Not the next day, kid. You text <laughs> when you get back that day. So... I just thought I'd call you out publicly. Yeah, go ahead and comment, son. Go ahead and comment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, we want to greet also those of you that are watching around the world yes, today. Thank you. And uh, the first service, I don't even know how you describe it. Uh, there is a strong prophetic word that came, but I mean, the preaching, I, don't, I didn't preach anything that I had prepared for. So we were just kind of all over the place. It was kind of one of those, I don't know, how do you? How do you prophetic use? soup. Okay, prophetic. Brenda said prophetic soup. So I'm not sure what like this that. is going to be. <laughs> we like prophetic. that. Love you love prophetic? Yeah. David Ellis loved the prophetic soup. So I don't yeah, know what this is going to be. Um, maybe turkey leftovers. I don't know, but, but it's going to be a great word. I want to continue to communicate, and, and I believe it's the heart of God, and I want you to hear this. I really sense the Lord is saying that we are being brought out of a lot of the harshness, the nonsense, Come on. Um, really the things that we've been facing individually, but also in our countries. And so you want to make sure that you stay tuned. And again, I don't know how it'll come out, but you're going to hear, I believe, not only truth, but you're going to see what God is saying about your present moment but also about your future. Amen? And it was so good. And I'll be honest, just to say, God is not just going to. We're already seeing it. Yeah, we're in the process. I have to say yeah, that. How many of you see that? Says. You're seeing it. We're okay. seeing it. Also, I want to mention this. So at the time, just before offering, I'm going to reveal another building that is part of our adventure uh, of expanding this campus here. So make sure you stay tuned. And uh, it's 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 beautiful. It's uh, something 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue no. somewhere. <laughs> no, I'm just Only teasing. you. Oh, I just thought I'd say people go, huh? 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. <laughs> Never mind. We'll talk about it later. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, but did, it, I, did you, I throw you off? Yeah, you did. Yeah, okay, I did. You okay, did yeah, throw yeah. me off. But you know what? How many of you are excited? Right, we're expanding right. as enough. a church. Come on, this is taking territory yeah. for God. Amen. Yeah. All right, well, are you excited to worship? What do we do? Let's throw those hands up. Come on, get ready to pray. Say, Jesus. Jesus. 
excited. I'm excited. You're King of Kings. You're, king of kings. You're in the Lord of Lords. Lord of I'm here to worship you. And I thank you. Your supernatural power is in manifestation right now. Come on, shout like you believe it. And let's praise the Lord. I will look into your eyes. I will look for your face. Thy face is what I seek, God. I will look into your eyes. I will look into your eyes. I will look for your face that radiates a grace. I will look into your face. I will seek 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 your face. Come on, just tell him. I will seek your face, my Lord. Maroto pai, riepai ishne, ribakos the mate sorob seili mi akayo sharo parede. It is like a kiss from my lips unto your face. As I lift my heart, as I lift my voice, it is like a kiss upon thy lips, O oh God, upon thy face. Oh, how we love you. <laughs> how we love you. How we love you. Oh, Lord, how we love you. How we love you. Will amora. Come on, just sing in the spirit. Risiparo. Jero. Sarere tonamai. Yaprakanu. Gelusile barre. So, 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 so. My etini maya. Ono samando de. Beautiful beyond any description. <laughs> Majesty and might is thine, O oh God. I will not fear. Why should I? I serve you. I will not fear. When I have God, <laughs> when I have you, Father, when I have you, my older brother, Yeshua. Oh, my day, I seek your face. Oh, God. Oh, my Lord. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Lord, would you whisper? I want to feel your breath. That somehow when you breathe, it is life unto all my flesh. It strengthens my body, my spirit. It refreshes my soul. Oh, beautiful. Why do I see, Father, as I'm before your majesty? It's like your hands are on the side, on the throne, and the left hand is upon the one arm of that beautiful throne, and the right hand is upon the right side. But as we were singing to your face, I saw those precious, beautiful hands turn open what would you say to us at this time I hear the God I hear him so clearly say the reason when you seek my face I will always turn over my hands take that's what God is saying take take 
from my hands. Everything that you need, everything has been provided. They're in my hands and the power thereof. We quote, nothing is impossible for God. It isn't if you understand what he has in his hands and who the one it is that stretches forth thy hand to you. Take. Take. Come on, you need healing. Say, Lord, I, I receive what's already been paid for. Come on, if you need prosperity and you're struggling financially, come on, just take. And say, God, I receive your blessing that provides every one of my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Come on, if you need peace, take it. Receive the heavenly shalom. I see his hand open. Put your hand on his hand. Come on. Lord, we receive your blessings. put my hand upon your hand and I take of the very life of God <laughs> in you I live and move and have my being the cells of my body the organs of my body they cry out and worship you and bless you they are filled with your life are filled with you, God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. You know, as His hands are being open and extended to us, I hear the saying that Jesus said in John chapter 10. And, you know, he wasn't kidding when he said this. He said, you know, the enemy comes to steal and kill and destroy. But, but I've come to give you life. Now watch this. He inserts an adjective. And life, what? More. Abundant. That's why it says when you come to the throne, you come. And he will do what? Exceedingly. Abundantly. Above. All that you can even ask or think. That's the outstretched arms and hands that are being extended to you today. He wants to prove he's the God of more. Thank you, Lord. I just want to do this as a prophetic act. I just want to put my hand out as if I put it in his hand. You know, it's amazing to me. Whenever you seek the face of God, he opens his hands. And his nature is he just wants to bless. Lord, I receive it. We take today. And that's why I believe what the scripture says in the book of Hebrews, that when we come boldly before your throne, you didn't even say we'd have to ask. You just said, come. It's like your hands are already open. And we would receive. And that's what we receive today from your outstretched hand open to us. We receive grace. Just say this. Lord, I receive great grace. I receive your mercy. And I receive your help in my times of need. And it is well with me and my soul. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Man, I could see that. All right. Well, why don't you do this? Don't you just love being with God? I love being with Him. And I love worshiping Him. How many of you love worshiping God? Yeah. You know, I always say to God, and I know He knows I'm kidding Him. Well, maybe not to him. Maybe it's true. But I said, Lord, I know I sound awful. <laughs> I'm not a singer. 
But I said, Lord, my heart rejoices anyway. And I love to sing to you. Amen. And I have a feeling that what God does is when, you know, I'm squeaking and I'm off key and my voice isn't there, that he has a certain way to kind of take that pitch and make it perfect. <laughs> it's kind of like, you remember the, how many of you grew up in the days of the vinyl records? You remember the vinyl records and you would have your favorite song on, then he would skip. I mean, I have some young ones that are like, what's a vinyl record? But anyway, they're coming back. And he would skip and then you'd have to go in and just kind of hit it a little bit without scratching it. And I think that's what God does with some of our, our voices. He just kind of bumps it a little bit and to his ears, it's perfect pitch. Right, David Ellis? <laughs> so, I love you here. Don't be a stranger. Okay. All right. So we'll have you back. All right. Well, why don't you do this? Why don't you greet someone, share your name, and then say this. I, say, I bet I know that you are done with Thanksgiving leftovers. All right. See if they're still going to eat them. See if they're still leftovers. Greet one another in the name of the Lord. praise as Thank pastors you. come the online uh, community so those of you that are watching online this is pastor doji and pastor chelsea and they are the executive directors over heartland hope mission so that's who they are and we're so grateful they're also spiritual sons and daughters so again you heard what they said they need some help there's been great great needs all across uh, this nation but also right here in in omaha so we thank God for you, and I believe that the need is going to be met in abundance this year. So we love you. We thank God for both of you. All right. Bless you. Let's give them a hand clap as well. All right. Well, before we receive the offering, I told you I had a story to tell you. And this story, um, you know, sounds like the Brady Bunch, remember? There's a story. But this isn't about a bunch of people. This is about a bunch of buildings. So that's the story. So... Anyway, as you know, and those of you that are watching, years ago, the Lord put it on my heart. He spoke to me very clearly. He said, Hank, build me a campus. And so, you know, I thought, okay, build him a campus. It means that, you know, we're going to need to go get land and find land. And, and so uh, we even had different prophetic voices come in through the years. And how many of you fossils, like I'm thinking of Ken and Amy, they're fossils, Right, they were like the first. Uh, here. Oh, Amy's here. They were like the first uh, on our first Sunday. You guys were here, so they're like the original. There was only like eight eight families or eight people. I think it was the first Sunday we started, and uh, <clears throat> so anyway, they're the fossils. And uh, 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 Amy more than Ken, but because uh, she, uh, I'm just teasing. Can I do that? <laughs> okay, there he is. But but we had prophetic voices come in, and you probably would remember this, Ken. And, and, and with all kidding aside, Amy. They would say, the plan is in the land. The plan is in the land. How many remember that? We kept hearing that word. The plan is in the land. The plan is in the land. I'm like, well, what land is it? And I, and I couldn't find any land, and there was nothing that ever worked out. And I'm like, God, how can the plan be in the land? And you're telling us that we're going to expand. I don't get it. Then all of a sudden, people started coming that uh, don't even live here, and they would say, you know, years ago, do you know, Hank and Brenda, that we prayed and we dedicated this land right here where your church is to the Lord. And I said, wow, that's amazing. And so, as you know, uh, it took the Lord three times, but he told me to buy this building. And at the time that he spoke that to me, it took him three times, I wasn't listening. Uh, I didn't want to be here. I was looking for land, right? And I thought that this building was ugly. It's not anymore. But God said to me the third time, he said, I said, buy this building now. And I'm so glad that I obeyed because I made a deal with God. I'm not supposed to, I don't know if you're not supposed to do that, but I said, God, if you, <laughs> you know, give me the resources to buy this building, the only thing I ask also is that you would make it beautiful. And he's done that. And so I remember when we called the owner of this building that we were renting from for several years, he said, I'm so glad you called because had you not called, there was another church that was going to buy all of this out from underneath you. 
So the timing was perfect. Well, then you fast forward, and how many of you know this uh, green uh, grass area right over here, uh, right there on our, our campus here? Well, I remember that particular day. I was just walking around outside one day, and the Lord said, buy that piece of ground now. And so I immediately called up the owner of that green property, and they said, man, I'm so glad you called because um, I'll sell it to you, but I do have another another offer, and it's from uh, an Islamic school and training center. And uh, if you can come up with the money, uh, I'll sell it to you first. And the, my only request is don't have Brendan negotiate with me. <laughs> well, I had Brendan negotiate and talk them down $35,000. $35, Go, Brenda! So the, so, so the timing was perfect. Well, then, uh, right after Brenda's uh, dad went to heaven... Uh, back when was that May, June, uh, May, May uh, I had a dream. And in the dream, I saw some people coming in to try to buy this, this plaza and they were going to knock down all the buildings and put up apartments. And so I said, well, God, they can't do that. We're building a 1600 seat auditorium. We need the parking. We need the space. We need the future. And so I immediately called the broker, and he said, oh, no, there's nothing like that going on. I said, listen, you need to call the owners uh, of this property because um, the Lord gave me a warning in a dream. Sure enough, he called them and said, we are so glad you called. Come on, come on, how many times now? Because we were passing paperwork back and forth, and there were investors that were going to come in and buy this and put up apartment buildings. And we close on this. That pizza building, how many saw the pizza machine out there, and those of you that are watching, and all of the parking to go with it, those businesses uh, will continue, it's an investment property, but here's what, it protects all the parking, and by the way, we are going to fix Millard Grand Canyon, <laughs> we are going to fix the parking lot, okay, so you don't have to go get dental work, you know, after, after you drive out from, from, from the work, we, and so there's a picture of it, that building, it's 100,000 square foot plus all the property. We are closing on that January 10th. And because of you, we needed, listen to this, we needed $2.4 million, and you helped us to raise, we're at like $2,050,000. Slow down just a little bit, but we need it, okay? Now, I'm in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and I'm praying because I went to see the Packers <laughs> two weeks ago, and they won over Dallas. Yay, but they lost to the Titans, so bummer. But anyway... I think the packs stink, Matt. Anyway, right now, I really do. I really do. So I'm not convinced. Anyway, we'll talk later. So have you ever had God say something to you before he reveals something to you? In other words, he sets you up. He said to me, what I'm about to tell you, move forward. Well, what are you about to tell me? What am I supposed to move forward? Because he probably knew I was going to talk him out of it. So has God ever asked you to do something that your head goes, huh? So he said to me, he said, um, and he spoke about the building, this uh, additional building, and I'm going to show you in just a moment, those of you that are watching. He said, uh, have Pastor Doug reach out, and this was actually kind of going on before Green Bay. He said, uh, reach out and tell them, because they had some rental spaces uh, free, or not, or not free, available, and he said, you know, uh, call them and tell them that you want to buy the building. Well, I had tried several times and for several years to buy that building that I'm going to show you. And the answer was always no. And there was a lot of prayer. We had to pray constantly. I've never had a building in this whole area except when Planned Parenthood was here and we prayed them out. Uh, I, I had never had any other warfare is stronger except that building I just told you about that is no longer here. In fact, they left after 50 years, said it's not working here. Of course it's not. The Spirit of God's here. The Spirit of life is here. So anyway, so uh, I, I said to Pastor Doug, tell the owner that uh, we don't want to just rent. Well, a, a, and the owner came back and said, no, you, you called at the right time. There is a serious um, third time they've been looking at this building and... Um, if you want to talk, then we will talk. And when we met with him, guess what he said? He said, it's time. He said, I felt like I wanted to sell this to the church anyway. Well, folks, we better move. And we're going to move. And we're going to go forward. So here's what you're going to see. So in this video that we're going to show you, we're going to show you, you're going to see the pizza machine building and all the uh, 100,000 square foot buildings go that go with it that we are closing on January 10th. 
that we need 2.4 million. We're at 2,050,000. And you're going to see all the parking lot, and you will see the canyon, those of you that are watching, that we are going to fix, make those buildings beautiful again. And then you're going to see our building that we bought here. Oh, okay, you'll see our building first. Then what, Brenda? <laughs> okay, we'll see our building first. Our construction. Then you're going to see uh, where we're building the new sanctuary, which will be, uh, you know, we need to really work hard on that. I'm sorry, the anointing is still messing me up. I am having a really hard time communicating. Have you ever been in the presence of God and it messes with you? It's messing with me. I'm trying to be like real perpendicular administrative right now. So just, just really bear with me. And so anyway, we are building this campus and we're building the church, which we really need to get these other properties out of the way so that we can, you know, really go full steam in 23 because the steel is coming. And what you see with the steel is only the hallways and some of the, uh, the rooms on the north side. But the big 125-foot long beams and the big pillars, they haven't even arrived yet. That's going to happen in January. So when you see this video, you're going to see our current facility. You're going to see kind of the dirt area where they're building our new sanctuary. Then you're going to see the pizza machine and the buildings that are attached to it and all the parking. And then you're going to see another building, okay, which is the building that we are going to purchase. Now... I want to also mention this. If they could put up the picture of the steel that was arriving, I just want to explain it to the people before I show them the video. I, I think it'll make more sense. Okay, there's the steel arriving. Okay, right there. Okay, that is our building right there that the Lord told us to buy. That is Lord of Hosts Church. The dirt area is that 1,600-seat auditorium, okay? On the other side, so when you're looking at the front of the building with those islands, is the parking lot, and then the pizza building is right across from that. That's 100,000 square foot, okay? But if you look behind Lord of Hosts Church, at the top of the picture, those of you that are watching, the top of the picture, there's another building. That's the one that we're going to buy, right next to the green space, which is going to be a parking lot with beautiful lights. Now see, yeah, all the way to the south. Now see the brick building? That's an interesting building also. You may not know this. But we also occupy 50% of that building for our media staff right now. So God has really expanded his campus here, would you not say? All right, let's watch the video, and then we'll come back and tell you what God wants us to do. All right? To the Lord. And um, if they can show a still shot of that building, this is very important. I want you to see this building because um, right now we uh, have a lot of um, outside storage units and different things like that for a lot of our product and, and, and things that we're going to be able to house there. We're also wanting to have um, a designated place, room for prayer, where you don't have to open up the whole building. It's always been my heart and my dream to have 24-hour prayer. Um, you know, it's just going to keep growing. We're also looking at 242 groups and other things, some maintenance and different things are going to go into that building. The businesses are still going to continue to thrive. Um, we thank God for those businesses. They've been there. Some have been there 35 years. And so, again, we are just here. We're going to make that building beautiful. We're going to make it look like the rest of the campus. And uh, it's going to be just that additional space. You can see where that red truck is. All of that is vacant, All that other half and the back half, and so we are, we are, why rent it? I mean, the owner of that building was so gracious, said, you know what, uh, if you're willing to work with me, and, and I'll work with you, he said, we'll make it happen, and so we're going to, we're going to happen, and we're going to make it happen, here's the thing, I've learned something with God, just do it, just do it, if he asks you to do it, do it, and notice every time, though, that he's told me to buy something, it's been the perfect timing, and uh, every time God has uh, come through for us. Now I want to show a scripture to you. It's Exodus 35 verse 5. I want to show this to you very quickly because this really is what this is about. You know, I used to be somewhat shy and uh, uneasy about asking people for help and asking them for, for money. You know, my dad was the kind of guy that when I grew up, he's in heaven now, that if you want something done, do it yourself. Well, that's good to a point, but it also requires help from people. And uh, you guys have been so gracious to help us and those of you that are watching. But notice what it says. Take from among you an offering unto the Lord. Watch this. Whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it and offer unto the Lord. Watch this. Gold, silver, 
brass or bronze. Have you, have you ever watched the Olympics? You have the three tiers. Well, I think that's three tiers levels of giving. And here's why I'm saying this. Some of you, maybe you saw this building, you're like, well, Pastor Hank, I've given, and I just can't give anything else. Listen, I appreciate your sacrifice, and I thank God for that. But here's what I'm going to ask you to do. If you are one of those that you have sacrificed and you have given, then the scripture is very clear. God gives seed to who? He gives seed to those that are willing to sow it or give it. How many of you have already given? Don't raise your hand. But you have given sacrificially already towards our building projects. Then don't raise your hand. But then I'm asking you, if you feel like, hey, man, I don't have anything else to give, would you believe God between now and February 1st is when we're going to close on this building for supernatural seed that if he gives it to you, you will give it to the Lord, okay? Now, there's some of you that are watching. You've not given anything to the ministry or you haven't given anything to this project. That's not a negative thing. I'm not calling you out. I'm asking for your help. There's, there's a difference. And so if you haven't given anything, boy, you could really make up the difference in those that have already sacrificed and have been sacrificing in this $2 million $400,000 goal that we need for that big parking lot. What we're going to need for this building is $500,000. We can do it. It's not that much money. And really, how many of you remember when we said 2.4? I said, well, I'm believing for $3 million. How many of you remember that? Come on, being honest with you. I didn't know what I was doing. $3 million will pay for everything. Yeah. And, and uh, it's actually $100,000 less than what we really need. So we're going to do this. Now, here's what you also can do. Maybe some of you are at the gold level where you, um, you know, we had several of you send $100,000 checks to this ministry. You didn't even blink an eye. Maybe you're a businessman. Maybe you're somebody who has the means where you could write out a quarter of a million dollars. You could write out a half a million. You could underwrite it right now. Listen, talk to God because I would like to come back and get this thing behind us because I want to build the house of the Lord. I really do. But let me ask you a question. If you look at the wars that have been throughout history, and the wars that are going on and the fighting between nations. You know what they're mostly over? What are they mostly over? Land, Land and buildings. Yeah. True. God is doing us a great, great thing by letting us not only take over the land, but he's also giving us buildings. And I am very, very grateful for that. So I'm asking for your help. And I want to remind you, how many of you drank coffee down there this morning? at uh, the coffee center down there, the, the Connect Center. That was a miracle, and it was from the chapel, Sandra Shell. Maybe you're watching, Sandra. And I remember I needed a quarter of a million dollars. On Friday, the contractors approached me, said, Hank, you said the Lord said phase one and phase two. It's now time for phase two. Do you have the money? I said, well, they said, you don't have the money, do you? I said, well, just give me till Monday, because that's when they needed it, because they had to get their crews and order their stuff. Well, I prayed about it, and the Lord said, talk to the camera. And I talked to the camera just like I'm doing now. And Sandra, you were so gracious, you wrote out a check for a quarter of a million dollars. We had it here by, I think, Wednesday of that week. So I've watched God do it too many times. Amen? So I'm asking for your help. We're going to get it done. And uh, we're going to continue. Listen, God just keeps expanding. And uh, I love how the Lord said, don't... Don't even fuss about it. Just move forward. Because he knew that I was going to fuss about it. I will be like, God, I'm trying to build a building. I'm trying to buy. But we're going to get it done. How many of you are excited? I'm so excited about it. Amen. And um, lastly, I want to say this. And I mentioned this in the morning service. One thing that I've learned in my, um, well, I've been serving God since 84. So that's almost 40 years. I've learned something with God. And, it, and it's very important to me. And I believe it's important to you. There's a scripture that says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not a force. He's a person. And I live my life not to quench him, which means to stop him right. or resist him, but I also live my life not to grieve him. And if he's asking me to do this, I will not grieve him by not doing it. I will do it. So I thank you for your help. Pastor Brenda, why don't you tell us how to do it? Because well, I, I know there's people there I was just thinking as I looked at all those uh, buildings in the video, I was just thinking I kind of like the sound of, Millard Plaza. You know, Millard Plaza is historic. It's very historical, Ethereum. yeah. So Millard Plaza now is the home of Lord of Hosts Church. I love it. I like that. I love it. I, yeah, like I want to protect I like the, the history, ring of too. That. That's I good. Like All right. Thank that. you for your so, help. I really appreciate God it. As well, they're going to uh, put that giving information up on the screen, and ushers are going to be in the Isle Internet Campus. They're going to show you that slide so you can see how to give. If you want to give to help us with 
the campus expansion, property expansion. We never knew that it would be more than one property, but we're just going to keep collecting these. I like this. I like it. Um, we're going to keep collecting the properties that God has for us. So you can still give to the property expansion project on the drop-down menu. It's right there. And then as you do that, um, of course, also um, the building project. This construction this way, if you want to give into the building project, just select building and you can give it there as well. So let me just encourage you, one of the ways you war against the enemy in your life is through giving. It's very important because the Bible says that when we lay up treasure in heaven up there, the rust or the curse of this earth can't touch it. It can't touch it. Now, if you only do all your warring in the natural, you lose, right? I was talking uh, either the last week, week before, during my last couple times of preaching about the fact that, you know, Ephesians chapter 6 and verses, verse 12 says, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Now, it doesn't mean that flesh and blood is never involved. It means it, there is the natural involved. But we, ha we cannot forget that the real war, come on somebody, is in the spirit. So we war in the spirit and in the natural. Think about it, you know, with your health, okay? You can claim your covenant right to be healed all day, but you still have to exercise and eat a good diet and take your vitamins, yuck, 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 and do all those things. You have to be healthy, right? You've got to do all the right things in the natural, but in the natural is not enough because the real war is spiritual. Same way with finances, Okay, Proverbs will tell you that a wise person will lay up treasure. In other words, they'll save money. They'll protect investments. They'll invest money on earth. But it's not enough to do that because that money is subject to the earth curse. We have to also war with our finances in the spirit. And the only way to do that is through tithes and offerings. So I believe today God is enabling some of us to go into our 2020 free by warring in the spirit. This is an opportunity. God is testing this house to see where we're going to step in 2023, 2023, 2023. That we're going to war in the spirit with our finances so that we see a breakthrough in the natural. How many of you can agree with that? Amen. All right. Well, when you have your phone ready, if you're giving electronically, if you have your offering ready, grab your envelope. Let's stand up. We're going to speak over it. I like that. Millard Plaza, the home of Lord of Hosts Church. Kind of like protecting the history there. Um, but you know, more buildings may come up. And folks, you know, we, you know, we occupy this brick building back here. Um, we rent the space. And so just be ready. God may say that building's gonna fall into your lap. So our eye is there upon it. How many of you go with us if however God expands? And by the way, let me encourage you, the church is we're doing this wisdom-wise financially. In the natural, the spirit, we're obeying God. Uh, but God has been providing. He's been providing for the building. He's been providing for all of this. So just know we're not just being silly. We're really stepping forward. And the board, all of the board of directors are very excited about what God is doing. We are building a place for the kingdom of God to expand. Amen? All right. Matthew, where are you at? You're going to come. We're going to prophesy. I'm going to pray for you. And then we're going to prophesy over this building. Hold that off offering up. Hold up your seed. Those of you online, Father, I thank you. We stand. Father, these are seeds for 2020 free. We thank you that, Father, we step into this new season in faith. We step into it in our giving. And we thank you that we use this seed to war against any attack of the enemy that would try to come against our life, our family, our children, our homes, our finding, all anything that concerns us. And we thank you the seed goes before us and it makes the way. Say this with me. Say, Father, I declare my blessing. It's not on the way. It's already here. I claim my harvest in 2023 in Jesus name come on shout amen. amen shout amen all right Matt let's declare over the building I you know I told the first service I said we're saying new auditorium and studio should be built now I don't know how to do this now we declare the new auditorium studio sh shall be built the pizza building bought the other building bought that bought the parking lot I don't know but all I'm saying is can we just include the campus when we say this the whole campus come on say Miller Plaza the campus of Lord of Hosts Church. All right, come on, let's say it with Matt and declare over the building.
We declare the new auditorium and studio shall be built and completed, and the Miller campus. We say to all the walls in that area, open up. We decree it shall happen without delay. We say that we have all the finances needed for the Lord is building this house. We have more than enough, excess and overflow. Lord, you are providing seed to the sower. We call upon you, Lord of hosts, to bring forth heavenly assistance and raise up multitudes of people that shall give abundantly to this work. We prophesy that we shall double, double, and then we will double again. We declare new things now. We decree new sanctuary and studio and plaza be built now. Now shout if you agree with that. Amen. All right. You can go ahead and be seated while Rocky Balboa here. Hey, you know, I mean, doesn't he look like Rocky? I mean, hey, how you do? I like that. I like it. You know, I think you, I think you look great, you know. All right, thank you. All right, how you do? All right. Smile at your hand. How many did somebody say next to you that they are absolutely done with all kinds of Thanksgiving leftovers? Anybody, raise, did they raise their hand and tell you that? Yeah, I'm going to have probably a couple more, you know. Uh, I didn't tell you this, but Pastor Shane told us in the first service, he cooked 15, or smoked 15 turkey legs. I didn't know a turkey had that many legs. So he gave me like five of them, so I've been eating them and dining like a king, man, as I'm watching football and stuff. So, hey, I do want to remind you, as the ushers are serving you very quickly, those of you that are watching, listen, um, there's a lot of social media stuff going on right now regarding, I guess there's some kind of Christmas series out or something like that that uh, our faithful Disney put out where they have kids holding up a sign that says, it's supposed to be that they love Santa, I love Santa, they spell it wrong, it says that they love Satan. Listen, I don't think that's funny. You can argue your point and say, yeah, but you got to watch all the shows and all that because, uh-uh. Why are you once again using children to say that. Why didn't you say instead of they, they love Satan, why don't they, you know, leave an A off and put I love ants? Okay, if they really wanted to make a joke. So what you think they're just making a joke and making light of, they have agendas. So with that, you need to get the Hank Kuhneman children's books where we don't do that garbage. Amen. You need to get the Captain Zepto series. There's still time for Christmas. And by the way, show them my, my latest one. So this is being illustrated right now. This is the one I just finished writing. It's being illustrated. We laid it out. I've been laying it out with Norris. And I created Granny Z there. That's Granny Z. She's a hairyologist, <laughs> according to Adam Clud. And her name is Zalila. And she comes at the uh, International Hair and Space Show. And she comes to give Zepto a makeover. And she calls him Zamson. And she wants to understand what's the secret of his success. So this is a retold story of Samson and Delilah told by Hank Kuhneman without all the smut. Because you got a granny in there, you know what I'm saying? So you got to get it. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. And then I got children's books. Tree, oh, Treehouse, uh, SSO. That's, so I got Mutsby and Milo. That's my latest one that came out. Um, I just wrote another story of Mutsby. It's called uh, Mutsby's Longest Day, and that one is a funny story too. I think they're all funny because I like to make people laugh, and so does God. And so, oh, my wife says, how to get them? How do you get them? Oh, go to hankandbrenda.org. Hankandbrenda.org. I had to get better at that. And you can get all of that uh, Chris, uh, Christmas book. You can get all of those children's products. And uh, also the Christmas um, or the animation video is coming out. It'll be done by the end of the year. So it's the first in this series. I can't wait for you guys to see Captain Zepto. It's going to be exciting. Are you excited? I mean, we're, we're all friends. So, all right. Well, let's do this. Let's preach uh, at you, to you, for you, whatever it's called. I want to <laughs> preach at you. But uh, what's that? Preach at you. I'll preach at you. There you go. So I want you to open your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 6. And I want you to see, this is our opening text. I won't keep you but more than, you know, an hour or so. No, I won't. But I want you to look at Deuteronomy 6 and those of you that are watching. And I want you to see that, notice it's verse 23. And I find it very interesting that as we're heading into 2023, that this verse 23 just kind of pops out because I really believe that it clearly shows us what God is doing. 
Now, here's what you have to understand and I have to understand. We are already in the Jewish New Year. So the calendar is already clicking. And in the Jewish calendar, it's 5783. Okay? And 5783 is also 5783. In two months, we're going to be uh, at the Gregorian calendar, 2023. And that is also 2023. God is declaring freedom. And it's important because some of you in this room and those of you that are watching, you've gone through a really, really difficult and harsh season. And as you see in this verse, it says, watch this, and God, God, God brought us. Now that us is individually, but it's also corporately. It's not just this nation, it's other nations. This was a deliverance for the people, but also was the deliverance for the nation of Israel. God brought us out. Notice who did it. Who did it? God. It wasn't a politician. It wasn't your favorite political figure. It wasn't your favorite political party. It was God. God brought the deliverance that was needed individually and nationally. And I'm telling you, in my heart of hearts, I know people are frustrated politically. But God, on purpose, is allowing some of that frustration so that your hope and your trust is not in man, but in what God has promised to do for you and for this nation. But notice what it says. God brought us out from fence, or he brought us out from there. Now... There was the wilderness. There was Egypt. There was the Red Sea with a socialistic Egyptian empire that was following after them, wanting to wipe them out. Or really, not just wipe them out, probably to kill off the men and who knows, save a few, and take them back and use them for slaves again. The bottom line is they were being pursued. But God brought them out of what? There. Now, what is your there? What has been your there? Those of you that are watching, maybe you've been in a very, very harsh season that your there is, man, I need to be brought out. My there has been, and maybe it's you're having financial hardships. Maybe you're having sickness and, and reoccurring uh, symptoms of sickness. Maybe you're having marital issues. Maybe you're having problems with the kids. Well, I believe that we are coming into not only global freedom and national freedom over nations. That's why you're seeing right now there's major protests. By the way, that God prophesied ahead of time from this ministry. He said, look to Brazil. Look to South America. Look to Mexico. Do you know Mexico, South America, Brazil, Peru, Bolivia? I mean, they're all starting to uh, have millions upon millions of people that are shaking their fists saying, you are not going to enslave us with, with your government tyranny. You're you're not going to slave us through uh, communism and socialism. And so there's an outcry that's beginning to happen because God wants you to understand that cry is, is really global freedom. It's what people are crying out for. Now, there's two things that are happening. There's a spiritual war. There's elitists is what they call themselves who are longing to bring the new world order. They want to bring things into one government, one way of doing things. The problem is it rips your freedom, steals your freedoms, takes away your religious liberty sets themselves up to be God. And so they are trying very aggressively to set up their agenda. But at the same time, as you see these protests, it's to show you that there is pushback that will bring put it back. There is a bringing out from there. Notice what this verse also says. Not only did he bring us out from there. Come on, I believe that 2023 and as we head into 23 you're going to start seeing hey I used to have those symptoms in my body hey we used to argue in our marriage hey my kids were acting like uh, uh, they were you know insane now they're having some sanity about them my children are returning to the Lord my finances are turning out why God is bringing you out from there whatever that situation is and he doesn't do it without bringing you what? Notice the verse. That he brings you in. He brings you out to bring you in. Bring you into what? Blessing. Yeah. That he may give you the land, the healthy body, the healthy marriage, the returned prodigals, the finances which he swore to give unto you or your fathers. God is bringing us out to bring us in. That is the word of the Lord that I see 
in this time and in this hour so clearly. Now, you have to understand why this is so important. Back in 2015, I, I, I will not forget when God prophesied this. He said, when you see a former president die, and on the day that he dies, it will, uh, the, the soil of America will shake. Well, did that happen, Pastor Hank? Yes, it did. 2018, you got to fast forward three years. In 2018, George Bush Sr. died. And on the day that he died, the very same day, there was a 7.0 earthquake that happened in Alaska. Now, the prophecy said, when the former president dies and there will be the shaking of the soil in America, know that you've entered into a new era. Now, at the time of that prophecy in 2015, I didn't understand. What do you mean a new era? God, what do you mean? Well, part of it is George Bush Sr., we found out, and it was obvious when he used to give his speeches that he would talk about the new world order. How many of you used to hear him talk about the new world order? He was big into that, and we didn't realize how deep that he was involved with some of these other uh, elitists and politicians that were working very hard to bring about this new world order. Well, in the meantime, God says, no, 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 you're not going to have your way. And the sign will be when you die, I'm going to shake uh, America's soil. And it happened to be in Alaska, way off in remote Alaska 7.0. To show that we're coming into a new era that is not going to be the elitist new world order, but it's going to be God's. And it's going to be his NWO, his new world outpouring. This is what we're coming into. Now, this is important because in 2018, the Lord began to prophesy that we were coming into a time that would be like Egypt and Israel. And he talked about how there would be a separation that he would bring. And there would be plagues, and we would experience a plague. And then uh, back in those days, we used to not uh, live stream some of our Wednesday night services because the Lord really wanted us to pray. How many were a part of those? And God, Amy, you know this as the assistant, God would speak such specific prophetic words um, because the Lord wanted us to pray about them, and they weren't meant to just be out there because they were so detailed about things that are playing out today. One such word was, China, what are you up to? And God connected it to a plague. He talked about Ukraine and handshakings that are going on behind the scenes with Ukraine. Well, at that time, Ukraine wasn't even in the news. How many remember these? And China wasn't in the news. And all of a sudden, here comes a plague. They call it the China flu. Here comes Ukraine, handshakings, a laptop that supposedly is connected to Ukraine and all this. And so the story is getting more and more interesting. Well, then in 2019, God begins to prophesy about the decade. And he starts prophesying that we're coming into a new decade, which was not a surprise because we're only a year away from it. But he said that the decade would be known as the decade of difference. And how did God say ahead of time that the decade would start? Harsh. harsh. Did it start off harsh? Has it been harsh? Yes. But then what did God say in that same prophecy? Just like 2015, a former president, an earthquake, and a new era. He said harshness of a new decade, and then it would end up into what? Rest. Rest. Do you know God just gave us a sign? He prophesied on October 23rd of this year. He said from this platform, he said, uh, watch, there will be one missile. He didn't say a missile. He said one missile, October 23rd. And he said, they'll say, who sent this? Where did it come? Why did they send this? And God said, I'll strike it down. And that missile happened to land in Poland, of all places, on November 15th. And on November 15th, then the prophecy goes on and says, and after you see this missile, they'll say, what is President Trump doing? What is 45 doing? He's flying his plane. Why is he, I'll paraphrase it, uh, running again? We need to stop him. And God says, I'm going to strike it down. Their attempts. It was so, that was prophesied, October 23rd, a missile and 45 running again. On November 15th, one missile, just like the prophecy, lands in Poland, and that evening, President Trump announces a candidacy. Do you think it's a coincidence? No. God is saying, I'm striking down the efforts that man, and they're preempting that they want, and the devil, to bring the earth into uh, a world war, into things ahead of time. That's what God's saying. Why did it land in Poland? Who knows? But do you know what Poland means? Poland in the Hebrew means a place of dwelling or a place of rest. 
God is literally telling us, this is where we're heading. It looks scary. It looks fearful. It looks like there is no hope for the future, but I'm striking it down. And I'm causing you to come into a spiritual Poland. This is where God is heading. Now, the problem is some people don't believe that God is bringing us out. Or that he's bringing us in. They think that, you know what, put your head between your, your legs and kiss your backside goodbye. We're out of here. Because we're in the days of Noah. Well, look at what Luke 17 says about the day of Noah. It says in verse 26, I mean, I, I have to agree. We're in the days of Noah. But I don't think it's according to what people are trying to do. They're fear mongering. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. Now, what I love about this is if you read, I believe it's the, um, the verse before. Let's go back to verse 25. I believe it's uh, verse 25, doesn't it? Is it uh, verse 25? Okay, but first, okay, look at verse 25. But first, talking about Jesus, first, Jesus must suffer many things. Okay, would you call that hardship? Would you call that harshness? Has, have you suffered many things? And be what? Rejected of what generation? So the generation that he was living in, he had to suffer many things and be rejected of his generation. Now stop right there. People have gone through many suffering. Come on, there was a point where you couldn't even get toilet paper. There was a point where you couldn't even go to church because they told you you couldn't. There's a point where they, they, they're now gouging you at the gas pumps and telling you to go electric. The problem is most of those electric cars, if everybody on your block bought an electric car, the grids could not even handle it. You ain't going nowhere. So they're stupid. Okay? They, they, women who had babies, you couldn't even buy baby formula. You've been suffering many things. And there has been a rejecting of Jesus Christianity, come on, righteousness in this generation. Hello, woke culture. Yes or no? And so then Jesus furthers a prophetic narrative. He continues to make a comparison. He says, Jesus suffered many harsh things and was rejected of his generation. And let me give you how it is like. As in the days of Noah... As in the days of Noah is not just leading into the days of Noah. He's saying, as in the days of Noah, who was rejected and suffered many things, just like the Son of God. How many understand that? So part of the days of Noah is there is going to be a harshness. There's going to be a rejection. Come on, they rejected Noah. They rejected his prophecies. They rejected his call to get their life right. There was moral decline. There was corruption. There was evil. In fact, Genesis 6 says that there was so much evil that God at one point said, man, I wish I would have never made man. I don't think the Lord is saying that about the earth at this time. I don't think God is saying this, how bad it is uh, in America, that, that he wishes he would have never made America. So it shows you. That if God was willing to bring about a redemptive plan in the most worst time in the history of the earth, when it was dark, it was corrupt, what is he going to do for us in the days of Noah today? When there's corruption, evil, rejection, people suffering things. And by the way, it wasn't, as the preachers are preaching to you, the days of Noah, it wasn't that God took Noah out of the earth. That's what people say. We're in the days of Noah. All this is happening so the Lord could just take us out. There's not a rescue mission of the Lord's church. There's a rescue mission of the nations from a socialistic Marxist, Jezebel, a spirit, and the spirit of Baal, and the list goes on. God's trying to rescue us from the satanic agenda, not pull us off of the earth yet. And by the way, Noah was kept here. And, and when you look at Noah, what did God eventually do? He judged the deep state of things because Genesis 7, 11 says that the fountain of the deep state or the fountain of the deep was broken open. God's the one that's busting up the deep state. God's the one that's exposing the darkness, the evil that's happening in the earth right now. But what did he do with Noah? Noah was the righteous remnant. Only eight 
people. It was not by the masses that God reset the earth. It was not by the masses that God brought deliverance to the earth or to a nation. It was but by eight people. One man, Moses, when the And I didn't really have the opportunity because the show was kind of going a different direction. And I heard the Lord speak to me. And he said to me, Hank, am I going to deliver this nation by many or by a few? I said, I don't know. You're God. He said, don't look to the masses. He said, I am delivering this nation by a few. And then he said to me, am I the righteous judge? Am I a righteous judge? I said, of course you're a righteous judge. He said, that's exactly right. And my righteousness and my justice are in absolute motion and process right now and then he said to me he reminded me of the 2020 november 3rd when 80 to 100 million who voted for things that don't bring the judgment of god to a nation except judgment always comes to evildoers judgment always comes to those who oppose god but to those who stood in a time to vote for things including a man who represented the most pro-life candidacy and president than we've ever had in the history of our nation, more pro-Israel, and he wasn't just one like a lot of the athletes and the movie stars who when they get their trophies and their awards, they get up and they say, I, I want to thank the man upstairs. I want to thank God. Well, who's your God? I'm not impressed, first of all, by your salary, and I'm not impressed that you could bounce a basketball, throw a football, catch it or anything else. Especially when you don't have a relationship with that's bold enough to mention who your God is. Amen. 45 would stand up and talk about how Jesus was his Lord. He would talk about how this is a Christian nation. And yet evangelicals, as he announces his candidacy, I don't know if I'm going to vote for him again. Pull your head out of your donkey. Let's get real. And yet, we have to honestly look at how God is trying to save this nation. But it's going to come by those of us who are going to continue to stand. That's part of how God is bringing us out to bring us in. Well, then here's what people say. Well, we're in the days of Noah, Pastor Hank. Don't you know we need to be storing up? It's going to get so dark. It's going to get so evil. You have to understand that there's something that operates in the earth at the same time, always. Genesis 1, 2, put it up. In the beginning of time or after, you know, watch, watch the condition of the earth. The earth was without what? Form. The earth was what? Void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep state. So here you had without form. What is a man? What is a woman? They don't understand the form. Um, those are women parts. That makes you a lady. And you're born chromosome-wise. Science, trust the science. Science gave you those women parts. I thank God for my wife's. Amen. And I'm going to leave out the rest. But here's the point. It's not hard. You read about the days of Noah. There was no gender confusion. God said, bring, bring the animals on, 
male and female. As God commanded, as God said, that's a male horse, that's a female horse. How did he know? Trust the science. Wasn't hard. Wasn't hard. You know, wasn't a horse showing up. Um, what are you? I'm a tree. Okay, tree, come on. Right? There wasn't any gender confusion. You a male horse. Right? You a female horse. Go. Right? You act like this is difficult. <laughs> but notice the condition. Without form, void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep state. But notice what God was doing. He wasn't just stagnant. He wasn't ignoring the condition of what was happening in the earth. And the what? Spirit of God moved. God always moves when it's dark. When things are contrary to what you think is, is good. And notice how God countered the darkness. Notice verse 3. And God, what? Said, let there be light. What is the opposite of darkness? Light. light. What overcomes evil according to scripture? Good. good. So you've got to have some good if you're going to overcome evil. What causes men to repent? The judgment of God? No, it's the goodness of God, the scripture says, that leads men to repentance. Look at, look at another scripture, Isaiah chapter 60. In verses 1, we start there. In Isaiah 60, it says, arise and shine. Okay. Why? Get up, shine, for the light has come. And notice, the glory of the Lord is risen. So he's talking about the light. He's talking about the glory, but boy, keep reading because right when this glory comes, there's something that this light and this glory is countering. Look at verse 2. Behold, darkness shall cover the earth. Okay, so when the earth is dark, that's the time you get up and you realize that God is going to counter it just like he did in Genesis 1. He said, let there be light. When it's dark, when there's all kinds of political confusion and insanity going on in a culture, and it's dark on the face of the evil, like, like in the days of Noah, God countered it and, and, and raised up a righteous man and reset the earth with eight people. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And watch this. Gross darkness, that word gross, also means mental oppression. So darkness is on the earth, and now mental oppression is on the people. But notice the answer. The Lord shall arise upon you, and his glory is the answer, will be seen upon you. So notice there's darkness and there's light that's happening at the same time. Right? But look at verse 3. Light always wins. And the Gentiles shall come to your darkness, to your light. And kings shall come to the brightness of your rising. Now go to Joel chapter 2, verse 2. Because you have to understand there's this simultaneous thing going on. Well, before you go to there, go to um, Exodus 8, verses 22 and 23. That's what I saw in my spirit, so we're going to go there. So go to Exodus 8. 22 verse, uh, and, 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 and verse 23. You have to understand, as God is bringing us out to bring us in, if all you're looking at is darkness, you won't think God is bringing you out. You won't think God is delivering the nation. You won't think that the decade that has started off harsh will come into rest. You won't think for a minute that God can change everything in a day. But God said, I will sever. In other words, I'm going to put a separation in that day of the land of Goshen. How many know that's where Israel, God's people, lived in Goshen? And how many know when it was dark in Egypt, where, what was it in, in Goshen? It was light. And he says, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there. In other words, there's a no-fly zone, a no-go zone. No Lord of the flies, the devil, or any of his demons, the flies, can come into my spiritual Goshen. God, in harsh times, when there is darkness, there's evil in the days of Noah. Come on. Genesis 7, the Bible says when the, when the animals came in, male and female, who shut the door? The Bible says in verse 15, God, in Genesis 7, 15, God shut them in. You're seeing the exact same example in Exodus 8. God was the one that shut 
By divine preservation, the anointing of preservation, just like what was on Jesus when he announced it in Luke 4. He said, hey, pay attention. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and I happen to be the anointed one. And as soon as he announced that, the anointing of preservation rested upon Jesus after eight different attempts alone in the book of John to try to kill Jesus until the time, even when Peter took the sword and cut off the ear of Malchus, the high priest's servant. And Jesus said, uh, Peter, put away the sword. Now is the time that that anointing of preservation is going to lift off of me. Because remember, they said, are you the Christ? Are you, are you him? And he said, I'm he. And they all fell backwards. So he, he still had that anointing on him in, in the garden. But then when Peter struck the servant's ear, Jesus said, put it away. Now's the time for me to lay my life down. And that anointing that preserved him lifted. It was that same shut-in of that anointing of preservation in the days of Noah. That no matter how evil, corrupt it was outside the ark, it wasn't touching them. Because there was a separation going on. Right? Was there any rain, lightning, thunder, corruption in the ark? No. In the same way, Goshen. God says there's going to be no flies. Come on, flies speaks of the devil. Satan is called the Lord of the flies. He's like, this is Luke 10, 19, boys. This is, behold, Jesus speaking, Luke 10, 19. I give you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the devil. Watch this, spiritual and natural immunity. And by no means, verse 19, Luke 10, shall anything harm or injure you. Amen. Come on, that's a no-fly zone. That's a no-go zone. Not the Lord of the flies, the devil, or any one of his imps and demons or anything else are going to touch you. Do you see that? Exodus 8. I'm putting you in a spiritual Goshen, an anointing of preservation, and the devil cannot touch you. Exodus 8, 20. No, no. Watch what he does in verse 23. He says, I'm the Lord who's in the midst of the earth, and I will put a what? Verse 23. I will put a separation between my people and thy people, and tomorrow this will be a sign. Do you understand this is what God is doing as he's bringing us out to bring us in? He's creating on purpose a division. Yes, there's darkness. Nobody's putting their head in the sand. But I'm here to tell you that God at the same time is intervening with his light. And light is going to overcome and will overcome this darkness. Well, Pastor Hank, don't you understand? We're in the days of doom and gloom. Look at Joel 2, verse 2. There's a scripture. Joel 2, verse 2. Watch this. It says... It is a day of darkness and gloominess. Right there, people are selling their fear-mongering books. Right? Kiss your backside goodbye is the name of their books. It's over. It's over! That's the name of their books. It's over! It's done! Right? Jesus told you 365 times in Scripture, fear not. And the name of their title is Fear Ye. And they gather all their current events and try to calculate it to end time eschatology. And they don't realize something. It's a day of darkness and gloominess. But then keep reading. You're going to see the separation again. And you could put an end there. See that comma? You could put an end there. And a day of clouds and thick darkness. It's not all the same thing. The darkness and gloominess is one thing. That's the darkness. That's the deep state. That's the evil. But the clouds and thick darkness are the same Hebrew words when God came down in Exodus 19, Exodus 20, Exodus 21. It says he came in a cloud of thick darkness. In fact, in the book of Deuteronomy, when Moses went into that cloud, it says, wow, Moses went into the thick, dark cloud where God was. Do you understand? It's both. Arise, shine. The glory of the Lord is risen, and it just happens to be dark upon the earth. This is what God's calling us into. Now, go to Matthew 24, verse 1. Because I have hear people, they, they say, but don't you know we're in the end times? Don't you know that, you know, all of these are pointing to Armageddon, and I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> don't you know that all this stuff is pointing to Gog and Magog at the time of eggnog? <laughs> Christmas. And they're fear-mongering. And they're putting all their scriptures together to try to prove their points. And they don't stand in an office of a prophet. God always uses the prophetic office to deliver a nation. Hosea 13, 12. By a prophet, he delivered 
them and preserve them. Okay, 1 Kings 18, how did God deliver uh, Israel from the hand of Jezebel in a corrupt government? Through a prophet, through Elijah. So it just so happens Malachi 4 says that that anointing that rested upon Elijah is going to come upon the earth again in the last days, lest the earth be smitten with a curse. If God didn't release a prophetic anointing or a prophetic company, you could kiss your backside goodbye. As long as the Holy Spirit's in the earth and he's got his prophetic anointing, there's preservation. There's deliverance. There's a redemptive plan of God pulling you out. So people will quote Matthew 24. And Jesus went out, departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him. Let's just keep rolling. For to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? And truly I say to you, there will not be left one stone upon the other that shall not be thrown down. And he says, he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came and said, Psst, come over here, Jesus. Tell us, not anybody else, we're the end time eschatology guys are going to sell some books in Jerusalem. <laughs> Tell us when these things shall be so we can record it, write it, sell it. And what shall be the sign of your coming and the end of the world or the end of the age? So what was their question? Tell us, Jesus, when this thing's going to be wrapped up. Yes or no? Yes. All right. They wanted to know. So Jesus said, all right, here's what you're going to see. Take heed that no man deceives you. Now watch as we get ready for the next verses. We're going to talk about earthquakes in these next verses, wars. But they weren't repeated. The only thing that was repeated more than any other sign was the word deception. Three times Jesus warned them of being deceived. And I want to tell you, it's why I don't listen to the fake news. I don't watch the fake news. I don't read the fake news headlines because if you do, you will be deceived. And Jesus happened to say this sign of deception more than any other sign you're about to read was deception. Let no man deceive you. Verse five, for many shall come in my name saying that I am Christ or I am anointed. Come on, that's what Christ means. Hello, evangelical movement. A lot of it uh, they, they, they're so trying to be relevant with society. It's the same preachers, the same churches after Roe versus Wade was overturned. They couldn't get up and even mention the name of it. They couldn't even celebrate because you act anointed, but you're not. And shall deceive many. If there's anything deceiving people right now, it's the false anointings. What people think church should be like. There's people that think that church should be you just go there, you don't say anything, you don't bring your Bible, you do bring your Bible, but it's all about, you know, your coffee, and it's all about your social experience, and it's all about your family experience. And, and they think that that's really the anointing. No, that's part of the anointing, but the anointing is signs and wonders. Amen. And it's amazing, my wife said something, how come it is when it comes to the end times that people somehow think that there's no supernatural power? Do you know there's more supernatural intervention in the last days? Come on, think about Acts 2, 16, I'll just quote it. Peter stands up on the day of Pentecost and he says, look, this is that which was spoken in the last days, saith the Lord, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall what? Prophesy, pouring out the spirit in the last days. Boy, that's, a, that's supernatural. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And upon my servants and upon my handmaids in those days, I will pour out my spirit. Watch this, more supernatural. They will prophesy. And your young men shall absolutely have visions. Boy, it sounds like more supernatural. And your old men shall have supernatural dreams. Are you listening? And then there's going to be wonders in the, in, the, in the heavens and signs, come on, on the earth below. Watch this. Blood, fire, vapor of smoke. Oh, see, that's war, Pastor. Blood, fire, vapor of smoke. Have you ever noticed those are also elements of revival? Again, you have darkness and you have light. You have war, but you have God doing something else that shows his redemptive plan of help and hope. Come on. How did... How do you get saved? Through the blood of Jesus. Amen. Come on, there shall be blood. Amen. There shall be fire. What comes after a person saved? Come on, Acts chapter 2, there came tongues of fire. That's an element of revival. The Holy Spirit's outpouring. What is vapor of smoke? It's what I showed you in Joel 2, verse 2. Clouds and thick darkness. It's God in his presence, his glory coming. Amen. So it's not void of supernatural. And then it says this. 
All of these things, this fire, blood, fire, vapor of smoke is going to happen. And then it says the, the, the sun shall be darkened in that day. Hello, have we seen how many eclipses? And the moon shall be turned to blood red. Ooh, have we seen blood moons? Before the notable day of the Lord. Do you think that there is a notable day of the Lord? When you start seeing eclipses, blood moons, come on. And then what's, what comes after that? People quit reading. And whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's your global awakening when you start seeing eclipse, blood moons. That's why you have blood, fire, and vapor smoke. They're all to lead towards people calling upon the name of the Lord to be saved. But see, we all just go the negative. We all go towards uh, darkness is on the earth and gross darkness has covered the people. What about the light? It's a day of doom and gloominess. What about the clouds and thick darkness? Come on, same way with Matthew 24. The preachers are preaching this up a storm. Let's continue in our journey. Matthew 24, he says, all right, boys, getting to verse 5, you're going to see this. Many shall come in my name saying I'm anointed. They're going to deceive many. Look at verse 6. And you'll hear of wars, rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not what? Yes. Isn't yet. Nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilence, earthquakes in different places. All these are the beginning of sorrows or the beginning of birth pains. You're going to feel a little bit of pain. You might be sorrowful. And they'll deliver you up to be afflicted. They'll kill you. You should be hated of nations for my name's sake. Many shall be offended and betray one another, hate one another. Come on, hello, social media right there. Many false prophets, there's the media. Fake news shall arise and deceive half of America. And iniquity shall abound. Yeah, it's called riots in your streets. And the love of many shall wax cold. Come on, social media again. But he that endures to the end shall be saved. It's still not over. Look at verse 14. Now he tells you when it's going to be over. He tells you. And here's what most of these preachers are not preaching. And I think it's grievous to the Holy One. Because there's something that God does that is so important. It's his very nature. How many of you have ever been lied about? One day I was complaining when my boys came to me years ago. I don't even read this stuff. So you can put what you want out there. And they, they, were, uh, they were coming to me about something that when they were in high school, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, whatever it was. And, and they were saying, Dad, you know they're writing this about you. It's not true, Dad. I said, who cares? They're going to write it anyway. If they hate you, they hated me, Jesus said. That's what he said. And so they, they, they write different things. But here's what people don't realize. With all that's going on out there, there is something that God is wanting us to understand, and that is he is injecting his goodness in the earth. So I was complaining. I said, oh, you know, Lord, they're writing things. And so the Lord said, well, type in my name. <laughs> End of question. End of discussion. He's more hated than I am. He's more lied about than I am. And was. But the gospel, what's the gospel? The good news. So good news of the kingdom shall be preached, or you could say promoted. When you preach, you promote it. The gospel, good news about God, good news about his kingdom, good news about America, good news about the nations shall be preached for a what? A witness. A witness. A witness. A witness. It's not just witnessing. You know God's good. Get saved. No. It has to do that word witness is not just telling. A witness is also a demonstration. Right? It is. Right? God manifesting. A witness. And then when is it good? When's the end? Then the end shall come. Notice he didn't say that about the earthquakes, the deception. All the other signs ahead, not one time did he say that's when the end's going to come. He said before the end comes, yeah, you're going to have darkness. Come on, I showed you the other scriptures. But he said, look for something that's the light. And here's what it is. Good news is going to be demonstrated by my spirit. How do we know? Stand to your feet. Look here, Exodus 33, 18. How do we know? Moses wanted to see God's glory. He wanted 
to witness God's power and presence. And in Exodus 33, verse 18, he says, God, I beg you, I beseech you, show me your glory. So what did he want to see? The cloud and the thick darkness. He already saw the chapter before the darkness and the perversion and the corruption. Now he's crying out saying, God, I've already seen the darkness. You have to have an answer for that darkness of a nation called Israel. I want to see your glory. You know what God said? Now, you've ever been lied about? God's been lied about. But one thing is he, first thing he did is he revealed his nature. Notice verse 19. He said, I will make all my what? Goodness pass before you. First thing he said. Look at 2 Chronicles 5 verse 13. We're going to close with this. 2 Chronicles 5 verse 13. They're in the temple. They're setting up the worshipers. They're setting up the singers. And notice what they were saying at the latter part of that verse out of their mouth. For the Lord is what? Good. Good. And his mercy what? Dures forever. Now keep reading. Then. So in other words, then means something happened after they said that. What happened after they were declaring the Lord's goodness? His glory showed up. Sounds like Matthew 24, 14. Keep talking the glory or goodness of God. Keep decreeing the goodness of God and watch for his glory to show up. Amen. 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 And then, and then, and then, all, all our eschatology boys, then the end will come. What they're trying to tell you is there's no more goodness. It's all over. And I want to say, excuse me, you wouldn't have Roe versus Wade. You wouldn't have Netanyahu back in power over Israel. You wouldn't have 45 announcing a candidacy, which I think is still somewhat of a diversion. Okay, if we can be real. Seriously, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be having it. You wouldn't, some of the things, 85% of the conservatives that were endorsed by 45 to help get our nation back on track were elected. Even in the midst of thievery and theft and the buffoonery. All the judges that are conservative that have been appointed. And you think that we're all done? God's getting our nation back on track. And all those protests in Brazil and Bolivia is in vain? No, it's not. God said there would be a pushback that would bring a what? And we're seeing it play out in our very eyes. Pastor Doug, come. God bless you. Thank you. I pray you got something out of today. I love you. I'll see you Wednesday night. Brent, thank a hand. Give him a hand. Isn't that a good word today? God has good plans for our nation, doesn't he? Altar team, you can come up here quickly. And if you need prayer today for anything, our altar team is ready for you. And uh, you can make your way up as people leave today. And uh, we're here to help you assist you. There's power in agreement. And so we're here for that. I want to make this mention to, you know, Jesus has a wonderful plan for this nation and we're not, he's not done with it yet, but he also has a plan for your individual life. And I just want to make sure there's no one here today. And you say, Pastor Doug, I've not made that decision to make Jesus my Lord. Because if you haven't made that decision, then you're really serving Satan. You know, it's kind of like you're you can live and you can operate, but you're not connected to the life source. It's kind of like if you had a computer that's not connected to the internet. You don't have any connection there to really receive direction, information. And if you get connected to God in the right way because you're following what Jesus has done for us and you've accepted him as Savior, then you can have a purpose and a destiny in your life. And in fact, the book of Jeremiah tells us that uh, God gives us a plan and a purpose for good. That's his plan. The devil comes to kill us, to destroy us. And so let's do this this morning. I just want you to all pray with me today and make sure that no one here would leave without making Jesus the Lord of your life. If you're watching online, I want you to pray with me also. And we're going to make sure that that's secure. That's where you start is with a prayer. Just asking Jesus to come into your life. And, you know... Um, I think Pastor Hank mentioned it this morning. Maybe it was first service. We have to be like children in that way. We don't know all the answers. We don't have all the answers to everything. We don't understand everything. But you come to Jesus by faith as a child, just like a child would, saying, I'm ready to receive the master plan for my life. So let's pray today 
and I'm going to ask you just to repeat with me if you would before you leave and then we'll have you get out of here real quickly. Just uh, bear with me for another moment, moment here as we pray. Bow your heads with me if you would. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for sending Jesus Christ to this earth to save me. I thank you that he went to the cross. He died, he was buried, and he rose again. And today, I say, I say, I believe it. I receive it. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I will serve him all the days of my life. Forgive me for any sin in my life and make me a new creature. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer today and it was your first time, come on up here. If you're in the house and these folks that are here will be glad to give you some literature, send you home with more information to help you on the right track of that life. And if you're watching online, you can call us, email us, write us, and we'll make sure we get information in your hand and pray with you and agree with you. Have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon and evening. And don't forget Wednesday night, midweek recharge.